Hey everybody, Josh for Populi, and we all know it ain't a perfect world. So you create the perfect degree audit with all your naive certainty. Then you get it down on the ground in the muck and the mud and it don't fit reality, does it now? Luckily, you can make one-off customizations on each student's degree audit to conform to various situations that you happen across. You can do that with substitutions, waivers, exclusions, and exceptions. To track with what we're looking at, you'll need to have a working knowledge of the degree audit. We have more information and videos about degree audit basics, and you can find those down in the description. To apply these alterations on the degree audit, you'll need the academic admin or the registrar role. Once those changes are applied, students can see adjustments on their own audits, advisors can see them on students to whom they're assigned as advisors, and folks with the academic auditor role can see them for all students. All of these changes affect things like how many credits or courses a student needs to earn to satisfy requirements, or their required GPA, and most of them work at different levels, meaning that they apply to the entire degree, the specialization under the degree, or just one course group. Let's get a concrete idea of how this looks by going to a student profile, and then to the student tab, and then to the degree audit. Even though exceptions is at the bottom of the degree audit, that's where I'm gonna start. And I'm gonna explain this one in a little greater depth than I will the other three. Once you understand how this one works in terms of the options, you'll be able to apply that knowledge over to the other adjustments. The typical use for an exception is to reduce the requirements for the student. In our hypothetical situation, it's typical that a student would have a GPA of 2.0 for their graduation, but maybe we're gonna reduce it down to 1.8. Or typically, you require 100 credits for graduation, but we're going to require only 97 credits for this particular student. Let's look at type here. We have degree. If we add an exception of this type, it'll show up under the general degree requirements up here. So what we're gonna do is reduce cumulative credits right here by three. That's currently 100. Then we're gonna drop down here. We're gonna add an exception. We're gonna set it to degree. We're gonna set the requirement to cumulative units. And units in this situation just means credits because it just conforms to whatever the program that houses the degree tracks things in terms of. And then we're gonna enter the value three. We have that helpful little note there that says that this reduces the required value by this amount, so we don't have to add a minus sign or anything there. Then we have the note. Obviously, you wanna let other folks know what the rationale for this reduction is. If you have academic auditors checking things out at your school, they'll frequently be given the academic auditor role. And that's going to allow them to see all of this here so they can also understand why these requirements are being adjusted. Our note here will just be because I can. And then we'll save. We can see that exception down here. We can see who it was added by, what the value was in the note. And then we can jump back up to the top to those general degree requirements and have a look at cumulative credits and see that we've gone from 100 down to 97. That would work exactly the same for any changes made to any of these four degree type requirements. So we're not gonna go through each of those, but will demonstrate a specialization change. If we go up to the general specialization requirements right here, we can see that the overall GPA required is two. This student is currently under that mark by a little bit, but we can go down here, add an exception for specialization, then we're gonna change that to overall GPA and then reduce that requirement to 1.8. You can see that note that just says this overwrites the GPA requirement. So we're just adding the new GPA requirement for this student on that specialization. Now I'm gonna save. And then if we go up and check that, we can see that the overall GPA is now 1.80. And you can see that this student is getting a check mark there. So they're passing, they're satisfying that new 
GPA requirement that we just accepted. Now we'll add a course group type exception. If we go up to this second course group here, we can see that the student has earned nine credits, but 10 are required. We're going to reduce that requirement by one so this student can meet it. We'll add an exception again. We'll set the type to course group, and then we're gonna set the course group to that second course group that we were looking at there. And then we're gonna leave this set to units, which means credits. Then under value, we're going to reduce this by one credit there, and then we'll save. So now we will scroll back up to that course group, that second course group there, and you can see that now we're requiring only nine credits and that those nine credits have been earned. So this student now meets these credit requirements here. Also, you can see on the course catalog that we have a note over here that an exception was applied. So that was most of the permutations of exceptions. We should be able to cruise more quickly through the rest of these. Let's look at substitutions. Maybe it's obvious, but this option lets you substitute one course for another. So even though you require English 101 up here, this student hasn't taken that. So you're going to substitute in English 102, which they have. If we look under unused courses, you can see that they completed English 102 right there. So we're gonna go down and choose add a course substitution. When we do that, we can choose to apply this against the degree and the specialization, or we can do it against one or the other. For required course, we're going to search for the course for which we're substituting. In this situation, we're substituting a course in for English 101. Under substitute type there, we can choose either to have this happen at the catalog course level or at the level of the course offering. Most typically, you just use the catalog course option because someone probably has a single instance of English 102 that you're gonna substitute in for English 101. But if you need to choose a specific instance, you can. Okay, so then we're going to search for the course that we're substituting in, that's English 102. So I'm gonna select that from the list right there and then save. Now, when I go back up to the first course group there, you can see that we're showing as completed English 101. We're showing those two credits there, but we've also got that little note that this was fulfilled by English 102. So that's where we see the substitution showing up. And again, you can see a little note here that a substitution was applied on this course group. Let's look at waivers. A waiver means that anywhere course X is required, you don't have to take it. So if English 321 is required, with a waiver, you ain't gotta take it. It's like you already did. And that course is required here up under English Major 1, that course group. So if we click on not completed, you can see it listed right there. We'll go down and add a course waiver. The apply to options are degree and specialization or one or the other. Then under course, we just search for the course to waive English 321. We select it from the list and then click save. Now, when we go back up to that course group, you can see that we have five credits earned, three waived out of those 30 required. So that's showing up there. And then we see English 321 listed right here with those credits waived. Let's turn our short little attentions to exclusions. Exclusions allow you to limit a course to apply to either the degree or the specialization on the degree audit here. Because of this, exclusions are useful only in situations where a student has both a degree and a specialization, and then where a single course could apply against both the degree and the specialization. So under this degree, we show English 311 right there under that third course group. So that's on the degree. And then that course also shows up down here under the specialization on English Major 1 on that course group. And we see that listed right here. We want that course to only affect 
the specialization. So we're going to exclude it from the degree. We go down and we add a course exclusion right here, and we want the exclusion to affect the degree. So that means the course won't be included on the degree course group up there. And then I set the course to English 311, and then I'm gonna save. Now, if I scroll up to that third course group there, we can see that English 311 is no longer showing up there, but it still shows up down here on the specialization. Again, we've got more resources about the degree audit down in the description. Check them out. If you wanna dig deeper and get more value out of Populi for your school, join our Discord server. It's where Populi users can ask each other questions and capitalize on community knowledge. If you wanna become a part of that community, go to Help in Populi and choose Join the User Community. That'll take you to a spot that has instructions about how you can get set up. I've been Josh for Populi, you've been great. Thanks for watching.